Tom Hollywood. Hey, the big man here. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas, you rat bastard. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are. Together again on the radio. Good to be here. Wondering, you know, uh, we tell you all the time on this program, we tell you to DTB. We tell you to do it. And yet we never really know if you do. Sure, some people call in to report that they've done it. And we love hearing those stories. But we don't know uh, really if... um, if the vast majority of you are actually doing it, or if you push out. We don't know. Ever since I DTB'd, life has been beautiful for me. Fantastic. Ever since I decided to live alone by myself, this goes back a couple of years now, back several years now, um, I have made every decision about my house. Uh, here's an example right now. I'm about to redo my kitchen. So I'm going to move out of my house for a little while while my uh, kitchen is renovated for three weeks or so. And um, I have worked uh, with a designer, but to the final decisions on tile, the final decisions on the cabinets, the final decisions on the appliances, the final decision on everything, it's all been made by me. Me, myself, nobody else involved, nobody telling me what they can or can't do, will or won't do, why I have no taste. Oh, I had one woman one time tell me how I had no taste. Meanwhile, most people who've seen my house in the Hollywood Hills, they know that it's uh, it's like a work of art. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Four floors of luxury. It's just amazing. And it's all based on a concept I had many years ago to uh, renovate the house. And uh, that concept was meant to be timeless, and it still holds up today, five years after I moved back in. But there's nothing like having been under the yoke of a female... And we're not even under the yoke of a female, just with a female who thinks she's going to have you under her yoke. And then to finally break free and realize how many things you missed out on while you were with her. How many social situations, how many opportunities, things you could have done with your house, things you could have done with your bedroom or your guest room or whatever. You know, uh, I've got the big honking jacuzzi outside. 59 jets, many horsepower. It's lit. It's got speakers above. Music blasts in. There's not a lot of females who would sign off on that, not to mention the 61-inch plasma screen in my, my living room. Back I have had females say, You have a TV in the living room? Like it's supposed to be some kind of sitting room with, you know, slip covers and, you know, one of these rooms you never go in. You know, the living room's the first thing people see. I want people to come in, sit down, have a beer, feel comfortable. 
enjoy the view. Got an amazing view. The previous owner of the house treated it like a museum. All the walls were white like a hospital. And there was all this furniture that looked uncomfortable and looked like it had never been sat in. What did with people like that? You know, my mother had a living room like that. You know, she had a living room that had plastic slip covers. The, oh, my God. Well, get, you don't want to stay in the sofa. You don't want to hurt the sofa. So instead, you have to look at this ugly plastic slip cover. And uh, all the furniture, you know, in the summertime, you might be wearing shorts. And you sit down on that furniture and your uh, back of your thighs is sticking to the slip covers. Oof, awful. You know, I can go home and go to sleep at 8 o'clock if I want. I can go home and stay up late, blasting music if I want. I can take a nap anytime I want. Do what I want, where I want, go where I want. Now, does that mean I don't have female company? No, it doesn't mean that at all. But nobody can be a dictator. And I know that some of you have thought about doing a DTB, which stands for dump that bitch. But many of you chicken out, including those of you who call in here sometimes and say, I'm going to DTB, Tom, and then I never hear back from you. Some of you are just scared. Every once in a while, I like to talk to the guys who just did it. Every once in a while, I want to see how that felt. Some of you are sad sacks. Some of you, oh, I miss my ex-girlfriend. I'm thinking of calling her. How many of you get drunk and drunk dial your ex? God damn, why do you do that? By the way, how do I know about that? Because years ago, I did things like that, you know? Had a few too many. Pick up the phone. Call her up. And, of course, when you're in that mood... When you're in that mood, you know, you dial. At first, you're hoping she won't answer, okay? Then you get pissed when she doesn't answer. Why? Because <laughs> you're imagining she's out getting boned, which she probably is. But somewhere along the way over the years, I learned that when I put something out in the trash, I don't want it coming back into the house. If somebody wants to take my trash out of the trash can and use it, they can certainly do that. But once I have placed you in the trash can, as far as I'm concerned, I don't need you coming back in. So now my attitude is, you know, even if somebody bones an X, I got there first. What do I care if they're getting boned now? So I'm wondering if you've done this. Have you dumped that bitch? Have you done it? I'm looking for the people who've done the dump recently. Could be as soon as yesterday or today, but uh, recently. Have you done it recently? Have you dumped that bitch? I want to get all the dirty details. I want to get all the juice. I want to know if it was hard for you. I want to know if you feel great about it or you feel sad about it. I want to know what you're going to do next. If you have DTB'd, call me and tell me all about it. Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 866. Hey, listen, I'm a special needs um, kindergarten teacher. Uh huh. And I think. Darling, if, you, darling if you have special needs, I'll be right over. Because <laughs> I've got a special weapon. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Tom, that's our telephone number. Did your DTV? Corey, about the Tom Lagan Show. Hello. Good. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing great. I had to deal with some girl lately who was cheating on me. Cheating on me, and I'm a good guy, and I cheated her well. But then all of a sudden, I just got this itching feeling something wasn't going right. Even though I never caught the guy or saw the guy. When you're at home and you don't hear from the person all day long and then 12.30 rolls along and she says she's on her way home or at home and then you call her and she's not even close to being home, you're wondering what the hell is going on. Phone calls, she's not picking up. And then uh, 
you know, you get some stupid response like, you know, I feel like I'm I'm forcing myself to be with you. She just couldn't be like a stand-up broad and just say, I'm screwing someone else. Wow. Tell me about it. So um, how does it feel ever since you dumped her? Oh, well, I'm, I'm just taking uh, I'm just taking numbers right now. I'm kind of like going through the Tom like this book of breakups and uh, doing that, going out and getting drunk and meeting other girls. And I think I'm doing it the right way this time because uh, once the trash is taken out, you can't recycle it. How did she react when you dumped her? Uh, she was actually totally fine with it because she had some guy in the wings, some, probably some other doctor, which is, you know, totally cool. I can do better than her. Well, there's no doubt about it. And who needs a girlfriend anyway? Right? I'm sorry to hear what you said. I said, who needs a girlfriend anyway? Yeah, I'm 27. I'm a paramedic. I'm young. Who the hell needs a girlfriend? I got the world ahead of me. Right, just get laid. Exactly, that's what I do. I mean, it's summertime. Go to the beach, take a vacation, and uh, go from there. Why waste time even thinking about getting married or having a girlfriend? Makes sense to me. Thanks a lot for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Have you dumped that bitch? Here is Neil on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. Well, I've been listening to you for a year. I've learned a lot of stuff from you, first time caller. Well, I had a situation. I was seeing this gal almost for a year, and I thought she was kind of too good for me, and she thought the same thing, too, and she kept borrowing money all the time, and I was like a little puppy. I kept, well, I never used to get laid all that much. So one time, I mean, she kept borrowing money all the time. One one fine day, she asked me for $1,500. She said her car broke down. And I thought to myself, you know, what the hell would Tom like us do? So I told her, okay, you know, hold on. I'm going to come with the money. And I just didn't show up. <laughs> you know, it felt so good, Tom. Believe me, it felt so good. Look at you. And was that the end of it right there? Oh, yeah. Well, I had some stuff from her, and she asked me to ship this stuff. I said, well, if you want, want me to ship it, you got to pay for the ship shipping. Unless you pay for the shipping, I won't ship it to you. I love it. And did she do that? No, she hasn't. I still have her stuff. <laughs> now what you got to do is give her a deadline. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'm 28. I'm a geologist. I make a lot. I make good money. And now I, start getting, I, I started getting laid. Plus, you know, I just realized what I was missing when I was with her. Unbelievable. And I'm so gl and I'm so glad that uh, I listened to you, Tom. Believe me, I'm so glad. Me too. Okay. So is my accountant for that matter. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Jay on the Tom Likas show. We're talking to guys who dumped that bitch. Hello. Hello, Jay. This is Jay on the line, and Tom, you've been my ultimate hero. Hey, two weeks. I just did it two weeks ago. Tell me how it happened. Well, I've been dating this gal for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden she wanted to start doing the dictator deal. And I said, I warned her. I said, hey, be careful. It's not going to be friendly to be here by herself. And she thought I was kidding. So when she came home, <laughs> I, I flushed her all the way with the, the gal that does the lease agreements for the condo. And I had her right there writing the documents out saying, here you go. Here's the keys, honey, because you're all by yourself now. By the way, you got to pay all the bills up right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it was great. And then I also, on top of that, was kissing the gal that did the paperwork for me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Now, has, exactly she, has, said, she, has she blown up your phone or your text messaging or anything? No. The day that I did this, Tom, I took everything out. The day that I closed all the books, I took everything out. I closed everything out. But just so she didn't try to reach you or she couldn't reach you? She couldn't reach me. <laughs> I disconnected everything else. I said, here you go. But she's right in front of me. After that, the gal that did the paperwork for me called me up and said she's trying to do all this stuff. And I said, send her name. I can't help it. <laughs> so, hey, Tom, can you take me out with the... The Zulu, uh, the Zulu group. Oh, you want to be taking out African tribal stuff? There you go.
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number here. Let's say hello to Dominic on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. What's going on? Uh, well, I am a long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, I wanted to call in and comment about uh, dumping the bitch thing. I actually just dumped my girlfriend uh, of eight months, and uh, she told me last week that uh, that she was pregnant. So I'm just playing the cards, you know. I, I honestly don't think it's mine because uh, she's been uh, she's been seeing other guys on the side that I found out. Wow. So uh, <laughs> how did you react when you dumped her? You know what? It was it, it was a it was a good feeling because. Uh, you know, she's the one that's actually blowing up my phone now. You know, before the the roles were reversed, but now that I dumped her, I think she feels kind of lost because uh, she calls, she'll send text messages, uh, she'll leave voicemails, call me, you know, I miss you, I want to talk to you, stuff like that. But uh, I'm pretty much done with her. I mean, I'm young. I mean, I live in Hollywood, so I'm just playing it, uh, playing it day by day. Sounds good to me. I love it. Marcus on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? First time uh, caller, long time listener. How's Not it going, much. Buddy? Doing okay, Marcus. Good, good, good. Man, I DTB'd that girl a week ago, Tom. This girl had me wanting to take her all around town. She wanted to be wine and dine. You know, she comes over to the apartment. I'm a young guy. I'm 28. You know, I'm stable in my career. She comes over to my place. She acts like she's scared to get physical, so I just, you know, I get far with her. What's going on? She gives me this sob story about, oh, you know, it's my emotions, and I can't, you know, have sex, and blah, blah, blah. And I just asked her to get out right there on the spot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have time for that, brother. I don't have time for that. I love that. Yeah, man. You are, man. Uh, you know, you're, uh, you're a really cool guy, man, because you know what? Uh, there's a lot of guys I know that call there that have problems with uh, their ladies, and I know you give a lot of guys uh, confidence, and you take a lot of heat from other people, but uh, don't worry about it, man. You're doing, uh, you're doing some justice, brother. Glad to hear it. Thank you so much for the call, Marcus. I do, but, but before you let me go, I do have one quick question for you, though. Yes. Why are, why do you uh, not like publicists? I've heard I've heard you say that before. Uh, did you have a bad experience, or you just? Uh, I never said I know. I just I just hired a new publicist yesterday. Really? I could have sworn I heard you say that you weren't in favor of publicists. That's, that's no, 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 no. I have a publicist, and I've had publicists uh, going back many years. Nice. All right. No, what cool. I have well, a problem. No, here's what I have a problem with. I have a problem with publicists who rain down all this spam on me about guests that have nothing to do with our show. You know, and here's an author who said he's got a cure for the common cold, and he'd be great. He'll be in your area on the 13th at 10 a.m. if you would like to interview him. Uh, I mean, all these people who just drop junk mail on us without ever listening to the program. Those are right. the people I have a problem with. Yeah, well, those guys, those guys give uh, people like me a really bad name. But uh, I love what you're doing, brother. All the rest of you guys out there that's listening in time, grow up here in DTV. Tom, can you take me out Kobe style? Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here is Justin on the Tom Likas show. We're talking to the guys who have dumped that bitch recently. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? It's Justin. Yes. How are you doing? Great. Yeah, I ju I'm. I'm a new listener. I just started listening to you probably about a month ago, and uh, like everything that you say, really, really is right. Was right in front of my face with this girl. And uh, eh, zero tolerance policy, pal. You're out. <laughs> you can't say the F word, even in its adverb form. You can't say it on the program. No, you can't. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Adam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. He left at the last minute. Alex, hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Alex. All right, here it is. Here, I'm going to lay it down. My my story is a little different. Uh, I dumped that bitch, you know, because I've been hearing you, you know, talk about all these relationship problems, you know, for the past two weeks, and I just kind of like, 
you know, everything you say matches up with the way my relationship's going. You know, the girl, you know, gives me a hard time when I'm not making, you know, money or, uh, you know, you know, and as soon as I start making some cash, you know, she, she starts coming around a little more. So I'm kind of like, you know what, whatever. So I broke up with her today, you know, based on what everything you've been saying in the past couple of weeks. And, and now, you know, I'm struggling. And I'm basically calling you because you're the man. I'm asking you, hey, what can I do to just not call her, not drug dial her, not, you know, just to stay away from that? What can I do? Tom, any advice that I can, you know, I can do? Because I'm, I'm pretty bummed out. and I, I want to go back, you know. Uh, Why do you want to go back? She's a bitch. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's, it's guaranteed that she's, you know, in the sack. And it's kind of like, it's hard to let that go. So you have no game, in other words. I, I think I do, but... Uh, well, if you do, then go out and uh, use it. Yes, you're right, but it's kind of hard when you you know you're not you're not making too much money, like you said. You know what? what, what is but I tell you what to do when you don't make too much money. You uh, do you misrepresent yourself. <laughs> so I pretend basically act like I'm this big shot. Get in the sack and take off. Well, uh, more of a big shot than you actually are. What do you do for a living? I actually play uh, in a music group. <laughs> you're a musician. And I know it's funny. I know it's funny. You can't wait. Let me understand something. You can't find chicks. <laughs> I could, but I'm, I'm telling you, I'm used to being tied down to a relationship. In other words, I'm pussy whooped. I'm tired of being pussy whooped. I need some help. I need some advice. I'm trying to do it because I've been listening to you. I need some help. You know. But first of all, you either have game or you don't. Do you? I've been trying to. Uh, f word. F word. We're going to keep hanging up and hanging up until everybody has learned. <laughs> yeah! No F word here. You can't do it. And if you do do it, you will not stay on the air. That will be the, the last second that your voice is heard. In fact, it will be that minus the previous 70 seconds because we have 70 seconds of delay. Which could mean in some cases your entire call won't be heard. You have great incentive to obey the rule. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Have you recently dumped that bitch? It's Max on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Long time listener, first time caller. Doing great. Yes, well, um, I did this girl for two years. We have we were living in an apartment together. You know, just you know, just taking it slow and steady. And she told me on my birthday that she was cheating on me. On my birthday, no less. And so while she was at work, I went and I got all of her stuff out of the closet and packed it into my, to my two of my sea bags I got from the Navy. And I had him waiting for her when she, when she got back to her. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, please don't. Oh, my God. I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> you know where your mom's house is? I know where your mom's house is. Get in your GMC and go. And she did. Wow. So she didn't even try to talk you out of it or anything. Oh, of course she did. Oh, big, oh, big, big sob story. Oh, I love you. Oh, it's just that one time was freaking Jeffrey, I'm our boss over Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> good riddance oh. to bad rubbish. Good riddance to bad rubbish. So how do you feel now? Oh, uh, better, I guess. I mean, there's this, there's this milf I work with, and, and uh, I slept with her. I mean, she, she's a married lady, but... But I've been lusting after her for the whole damn time I was dating Shelby, and so, yeah, that was a lot. That was really good. Look at you. <laughs> You're laughing it up over there. I love it. All right, man. Can you take me out to Kobe Bryant style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to. Uh, oh my! <laughs> Come on, that can't be real. Come on. I I know Dean says he can't pass it up, but come on, this can't be real. Uh, Gene, you're making it up. Hi, Tom. How are you? All right, you're making the story up. It, it... I swear to God on everything I have. How long did you date this guy? Almost. You were married to him? Yeah. About, well, 18 years. 
So you're married to her for 18 years. Uh-huh. And were you happy during most of that time? I uh, no. I had two kids. That's about the most important part of that. Well, why did you stay there and have kids with a guy if you weren't happy with him? Well, because he decided he wanted to be a woman. That's why you stayed? No, 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 no. I stayed because we were military and all my bills were paid. Everything was paid. I didn't have to work. I didn't have to do anything. So because you were lazy? Yeah, pretty much back then. All right. So you were lazy, and you were with him for over 20 years. Yeah. And when did he decide he wanted to become a woman? Uh, about 10 years ago, and he had surgery six years ago. Wait a minute. 10 years ago? Mm hmm Why did you stay then? Because I had kids, and I had... Do you want your kids being around their, their, their dad who becomes a woman? No, no, I wasn't with him when he became a woman. We split up 10 years ago. I'm just saying, eight, six years ago was when he had the surgery. Wait a minute. Anyhow, I can do... How old, wait, 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 let me get this straight. How old are you now? I am, I'm 36, about to be 37. And you were, you broke up with him when? I broke up with him 10 years ago. When you were 26, and then you were with him for 18 years before that? No, 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 eight years before that. It's ten years. I, I counted all as 18 years because I have his kids. Well, you're not with him now, and you haven't been with him for all this time. I know. And the reason, what I'm saying, what I was trying to say is talking about getting back at him and breaking up with him was because of this. But whenever I want anything, you know, all I got to do is call him up and say, hey, I need money for such and such, and he gives it to me. She gives it to you. Yeah. All right. So wait a minute. You bro Let me understand this. You broke up with him after you were with him for how long? After we were together for about eight years, we broke up and we separated. We went our separate When you were 26? Yes. And when, right, so when did you find out that he wanted to become a woman? What, eight years ago, ten years ago, tw when? No, it was it was 18 years ago when I found out, but like I said, we were in the military stationed in Germany when I found out, and I was pregnant. So you had another baby with him, even though you knew he wanted to be a woman? Okay, now, yes, but he said he was trying to prove that he was a man by getting me pregnant again. And you were all in favor of that? Yeah, well, I wanted to be with a man. I mean, what girl doesn't want to be with a man? Right. But you understood that you were having a kid with a guy who clearly had issues. Yes. Why would you do that? Because I wanted children. And I didn't, aren't feel, getting, I didn't feel you're telling worthy. Me. I didn't feel worthy to <laughs> anybody else. I mean... With him wanting to have changed, I had, like, the self-esteem out of, like, nowhere, and I knew that if I could lo love my kids unconditionally. But your kids then have to carry this baggage with them. Why wouldn't you just want to have kids with someone else who's normal? But I wouldn't. I don't think I'd have the kids that I would have. I'm one of them folks. What do you I wouldn't mean? have the two kids I have with anybody else. I wouldn't go back and change having them. Maybe you'd have better kids. But my kids are great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand what you're saying. I just, I'm just saying, what I'm saying, my point is, is that we're not together anymore, and I can get pretty much anything I want from him. All I got to do is call. But, but it's still a woman. Yeah. But that's, I don't care. I don't live with them. I don't have sex with them. Her. Her. I mean, you know, I mean, if you can get something for free, why not? I mean, if they're going to be dumb and say, here, yeah, go ahead, take this money and not expect anything in return, then, you know, whatever. Okay. Is it my, is it my fault he does it? You she picked him. You picked him. Her. But, yeah, I know. You picked a but, person who was screwed up. Well, I didn't know he was screwed up until after we were stationed in Germany and I was pregnant. But then you had another kid with him and he was screwed up. I understand. I understand that. And now you're saying it was a good move. 
No, I didn't say it was a good move. It might not have been the best move. I don't think it was a good move. So what should I do then? Well, nothing you could do now. What's done is done. The horse left the barn. So there's nothing. I mean, there's you, there's nothing you could suggest that I could do even. Should I just leave him alone and just. Just put, don't do it again, for God's sake. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas. Like I got the new test for uh, man's best friend. What's that? You, you take your girl and you take your dog and you put them in the trunk of your car. And you leave them there for about two hours. And when you come back, you see which one's happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas. It's one 800 tom Did you DTV recently? To tell. It's Bill on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Father, how are you tonight? Doing okay, son. Good, good. Tom, I have a uh, story. I, it's kind of a warning to the the guys out there. Um, it's also a a, a good story um, to really listen to what the girls are saying. Um, I'm a 37 year old. Recently, found me a cute little 23 year old. Took her out. Oh, for a few months, and she claimed from pretty much day one that she was a trust fund child, inheriting about, oh, you know, several million dollars when she turned 25. Very good at playing off the whole trust fund baby routine. She even, she would pay for dates, she would pay for things on, on our, you know, as we were going out. And recently found out through, oh, some circumstances that, indeed, she was a compulsive liar and none of that was true at all. Really? Yes. So what kinds of things was she lying about? Well, the fact that she was a trust fund baby. Right. Uh, she... No, I understand that part, but I mean, I imagine there's a whole spate of things she was lying about. Oh, oh, absolutely, and she was so good at it, too. Um, her her parents would uh, um, house it every once in a while for this very, uh, you know, very decadent house in, in, in Dallas, and um, she would take me over there claiming it was her house. In fact, her parents were just house-sitting, and uh, she would take me over there claiming it was hers, and that the other small little house they lived in was just the house they had bought for her. Um, a whole story about her French heritage, that uh, her grandfather was a French tycoon in Paris, and that's where all this money was coming from. Let me ask you a question, Bill. Uh, how did she react when you dumped her? Um, she was pretty good, um, up until about a week ago when she, uh, oh, let's just say had quite a few beers and maybe some other substances in her and showed up at, uh, my house when, um, I've already moved on. I was over at, uh, the next girl's house spending the night with her. So, um... Unfortunately, my, my my roommate was forced to deal with her <laughs> as she passed out, uh, proceeded to pass out into the dri in the driveway at about uh, midnight. Wow. Yeah, I was I was you know I was busy. I, I was I was occupied um, at the at the time, and so my phone was off. Did not know any <laughs> any of this was going on until the next day. When I turn my phone back on and I'm barraged with several uh, drunk messages for her, from her, each getting progressively worse, and then my panicked roommate wondering what to do, um, and sent her a text 
the next day after I uh, uh, heard about this and said, I don't ever want to effing see you again. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. And, yeah, really haven't heard from her since. You're probably better off. Are you enjoying life more now? Um, uh, um, I am, I'm, I'm juggling about four girls right now. It's <laughs> the best thing I have ever done. I lo don't you wish you did this earlier? Uh, you know, I, I have to say I had a lot of fun. She played it off well. She was an absolute maniac in the sack. I mean, just any, anything goes. Anything went. Uh, um, so I think that was part of the blinders. Yeah, but, that's what happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, that happens. So, but um, yeah, the uh, the fact that she is gone and no more, and I have moved on to several more ladies is uh, is a very good thing. No doubt about it, Bill. Thank you. Wow. Don on the Tom Likas show. We're talking to guys who have DTB'd. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Don. You know, I DTB'd her two weeks ago. I'll tell you that right now. It is the best feeling I have felt since I've been with her. I feel like a weight is lifted from me that I never knew was there. I'll tell you that. Now, Don, you're 21 years old. What were you doing with a girlfriend? You know, I was, I've been young, I've been stupid, and I was desperate, you know? I, it was puppy love. It, it wasn't even real love. It was just something that I did. That, and another thing, you know, it was the cuteness of the whole situation, you know, she was into the whole costumes and toys and the whole nine yards, and, you know, she was nagging me and nagging me, and eventually I found out that she had actually been seeing someone behind my back. So I went ahead, and, you know, I just, I got rid of her. I told her, you know, I don't think it's working out. And she's like, that's fine. She's completely cool with it. Some, you know, no attitude whatsoever, and that in itself frustrated me because the whole idea of me leaving her was to upset her in some sort of way. So, as a sort of a subtle revenge, uh, when she asked for her things back, I put all of the costumes, all of the toys that she left in my house, and I put it in an open top box. Instead of taking it to her place, I took it to her parents' place, rang the doorbell, left it on the front door with her name on it, and walked away. And that was it? So you haven't heard from her, spoken to her, anything like that since? No, I have not heard from her since. I, I know through the network that she is extremely, extremely pissed at me. But besides that, nothing negative. Who cares if she's pissed? Are you done with girlfriends now? I think I am done, Tom. You think? I am done, Tom. You think? Okay. I, I, I know I am done. I am absolutely done at this point. There, there is just no reason to continue. I, I was weighted down. I don't want to be fooled again. I'm young. Like the last caller, I am a musician, and I'm going to go at it full force. I, mean, I am just going to live from here. Isn't on that out. the reason to become a musician? Most musicians don't make a lot of money. You know, when I was younger, um, I, 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 it was the attention, and, I, and as I get older, I think it. I think it has more to do with the craft. You know, like you don't. I don't really have anything else going for me. It's just something that I've been doing for so long. It's the only thing that I'm good at. So I mean, if you're only sharp, you know, you're only sharp tool. You want to keep at least that one sharp. What do you do for a living? I am a musician full time. I get paid to play bar gigs and mini gigs. How much does that pay per year, approximately? I uh, wow! I never really thought of it in that respect. Uh, maybe twenty, twenty-five thousand. That's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. It's it's really a struggle. It really is a struggle. Unbelievable. Yeah, it, I mean, the, the music scene is probably one of the worst scenes to get into right now. Um, what with file sharing and everything else going on, uh, it, it, it's, it, it, it's not looking good, you know. And 
We've also noticed that, you know, record labels nowadays, back in the day, they would search for originality. Um, if they found a band that sounded unique, you know, they would sign them and play them and sell them. But it just seems like nowadays, you know, they find someone that sells and they try to find 20 bands that sound identical to that band. And that's just not, I think that's what really hinders, you know, any sort of music, real career. Well, good luck, Tom. Thank you very much, Tom. Appreciate the call. Adam, you're our last call this hour. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Excellent. Well, I, I dumped that bitch about a month ago. Uh, she was uh, she went to a family reunion. I'm in Dallas, and she went down to Houston for a family reunion and uh, failed to mention to me that she hung out with her ex-boyfriend. And the way I found out about this, she actually called me up one day while she was still in Houston to tell me. And they went out to, uh, she like went to the mall or something with him. And uh, he picked her up in this truck. And apparently he stole this truck from someone that he killed. What? Yes, sir. And she was calling to tell me that she's not going to be back from Houston on time because she's going to have to testify in his court case. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can you believe that? You know what? I've been with a lot of lying bitches, so I certainly can. Our email address is my name, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.